So it's no secret that I'm an absolute nerd, but as much as I love to talk about really technical SEO issues with Shopify, the fact of the matter is most people get wrong on the absolute fundamentals and basics. So in this video, we're not gonna go to technical audits and stuff like that. We're just gonna start really, really basic, really, really simple and go through what are the fundamentals of Shopify SEO and how to get that right because Trust me here, if you get this right, most of the work is already done anyway. So let's dive into it. I mean, as you're watching this, if at any time you're thinking, hey, this guy may actually know a thing or two about this and it's actually helpful, then do me a favor, please, and tap the like button below. It just really helps out for the YouTube algorithm. So one of the coolest things with Shopify is that you don't need to install an app for SEO. In fact, there are many Shopify SEO apps, but you really don't need them if you know what you're doing. And one of the best things that you don't need an app for is optimizing the title tag and the meta description. In fact, if you open up any product, any blog post, any page, any collection, and even for the homepage, you can optimize the title tag and the meta description. You can do that by opening up a product, scrolling down, you see them literally at the bottom, you click edit website SEO, and then you can go ahead and optimize those two things. And it's really, really, really easy. No apps needed. If you wanna do this, by the way, for the homepage, you need to go into online store, preferences and then the title and meta description section again it's very very easy now what i want to do next is explain what these are why they matter and how to optimize them properly because again most people get these absolute basics right so the first thing you want to optimize is the page title in shopify seo also known as the title tag where this matters where this shows is when you search something inside of google and you see a title a URL and a description is that title that Google are pulling from this page to show in here. That is the title tag or again, page title inside of Shopify. What you wanna do here is in short, focus on the keyword here. So include the keyword that you wanna target and then focus on users because it needs to actually show in the search results. So if you can get a little bit more technical and say, okay, it needs to be give or take like 50 to 70 characters, give or take that sort of range and so on, but it doesn't really matter. The main thing you wanna remember, because Shopify even helps you with that, I think it has around 70 characters they recommend. What you wanna do is include the keywords. Now, before you even do that, you need keyword research. Now, go check out my SEO Accelerator course on this YouTube channel, it's completely free. I cover not only how to do this properly, but also I cover keyword research, so you know how to do that also. But essentially, you need to figure out what are people searching to find this product or find this collection or find this blog post or anything like that. Let me give you an example, okay? So this is a sofa. I don't know if you've seen one of these things before, but it's called a sofa, okay? And specifically, it's like a cream leather sofa. Now, one of the problems people have when they're creating collections on Shopify is they're not thinking about search engines, right? They're not thinking about SEO. So they're gonna create a collection and maybe it'll be called cream, right? Or cream leather, right? They're not putting cream leather sofas because they're not really thinking, okay, that's the full keyword. They're just thinking, okay, this is the cream leather section or collection, right? And one of the things you find often is issues like that, or maybe someone sells like some skincare products and rather than putting in like some people actually search, you just do, okay, this is the face skincare collection, right? So just name it face and have one body. But no one's searching for skincare stuff by typing in face or body, right? They search for like, moisturizers for your face or whatever else. I don't know anything about this stuff, right? And the point is you need to have keyword research so you know what are people searching so you can include that in the page title or again, the title tag. That is really the main thing. Now you can add additional things in here. You call these modifiers or secondary keywords. Essentially, if your main keyword is say cream lover sofas, then you can also have corner sofas and other types of sofas. I have no idea. I've really should pick topic that I actually know about. But since you can add other ones, you can also add modifiers. So you can say buy cream leather sofas. So some people search buy sofas online, buy cream sofas. You can target those keywords. You can also target um, say UK. So buy cream leather sofas UK or buy leather sofas UK, whatever the pages. And then people searching for leather sofas UK, then you can also target them as well. These are called keyword modifiers, essentially just expanding that by targeting additional keywords. It's a very, very easy thing to do. Now on a single page level, this is actually very, very easy to do because you just literally do the research, include the keywords and write your title that way. The problem of course is when you're doing this across 
5,000 products, suddenly you have a heck of a lot of work. And really what you need to do at that point is do a little bit of keyword research or look at basically say Google Search Console, look at the impressions and prioritize by what are the most important pages, which ones are gonna basically bring the best results, right? And which ones are we currently doing well on so we can kind of get a quick, easy win in there. That is really all we're doing now. You need to prioritize that. What usually we do for a campaign is we're gonna focus on doing this plus other stuff we'll get into at about 20, 25 pages a month or so. Once your page title is done, it's optimized again for your main keyword at a minimum. And by the way, just a quick note on that, be very, very careful not to have the same main keyword for multiple pages. You can't do that, okay? It's one main topic really per page, and you don't wanna have two pages targeting the same keyword. Sometimes you have lots of products that are really, really similar. Pick one or pick a collection usually that can target that because it's gonna be better. And again, if you're not sure which one to do, is a page, product, anything like that, just do a Google search search for say leather sofas, check the competition. Are they ranking a collection page or a category page? Are they ranking a product page? Are they ranking a blog post information? What type of content is it? Create the same type of content, copy what works. But make sure also that there's only one page targeting this keyword. You don't want 15 different pages targeting cream leather sofas because it gets a little bit confusing and the rankings can be just really inconsistent. Sometimes you're ranking page one and then you rank really well and suddenly page two comes up and then page three comes up and it's like, it just, if you ever look at your rankings and it's like, I don't know why I'm doing sound effects, um, but that can look pretty bad and it can call inconsistent rankings because you have multiple pages targeting the same thing. Anyhow, once you've got that page title done, you wanna scroll down to the next section, which is your meta description. Now, meta description is again, what shows in the Google search results. And it's what's gonna show usually below that title and the URL, right? So what this is, is basically, it's basically just for users. And you can say include the main keyword in there and I recommend it, but it doesn't really help you from an SEO perspective. All it does is if you include the keyword in there where someone searches, it shows in bold when they search it. So for example, if I search for leather sofas, if you have leather sofas in the meta description, it shows in bold, so it stands out more. So it kind of increases the awareness and makes them a little bit more likely to click on your specific page. But beyond that, here's all you really need to know. You want to keep it to around 130 to 156 characters, maybe 160, something like that. And basically you want to emphasize that, hey, you have this video they're looking for and focus mostly on click-through rate, as in, have a call to action, shop now, visit the store, whatever, right? And also highlight the features and the benefits of that specific product or your specific store. I like to highlight specifically benefits of the store, as in we have free shipping, buy now, pay later, whatever advantages your store has, because then it's basically you're competing against the competitors, right? If you treat this as an advertisement, well, suddenly there's 10 competitors, there's nine competitors plus the ad section, why should they click your store versus the other ones? Sell it in that meta description. You've got about 160 characters to be able to do that, right? But again, also include the main keyword just so it's bold, just so it stands out in those results. The other final SEO factor in this little section here is your handle. In the section, will say URL and handle. will show the URL and the handle at the end, which is essentially the thing that shows in the URL, right? So for example, if it's a collection, it's going to be yourstore.com slash collection slash the handle name, right? It's very, very important that you optimize this from an SEO standpoint. And really all we wanna do here is include the main keyword with no fluff and extra bits, but at a minimum include the main keyword. Again, the problem comes in when someone says, hey, I'm gonna name this face because it's face skincare products, but it's not optimized for something people would actually search. So make sure you figure out do your keyword research, what are people actually searching to find these types of products and include that in there. And make sure you include the whole thing, unless it's really, really long. And we're talking like five words, maybe that's too long. But generally speaking, if it's a cream leather sofas, then you would literally have the handle cream dash leather dash sofas. Very, very simple. Just have the main keyword in there. But of course, if you're using modifiers or anything in your title tag, as you explained previously, and you put in like buy cream leather sofas UK, then you don't want to include buy or UK in there. You just want to include that main keyword, which is again, cream dash leather dash sofas. Very, very simple. Include the main keyword. You don't need to worry much, much about it. Just keep it nice and short. Include the main keyword. Easy peasy. Once you modify the default website SEO settings that are built into Shopify again, you want to scroll back up again and you want to go up to the title and the description. 
Now this is again the H1, usually if, you, if your theme is optimized correctly, and the content and description is the content on the page. This is again really, really important for SEO. So what do you want to do? Starting off with the title, the product title, collection title, whatever it is, you're just going to say title. You want to make sure again that you include that main keyword. And again, preferably at the beginning, same as the title tag. So again, really, really simple. This is usually just going to be the name of the collection or anything like that. But again, do it with SEO in mind. Don't just name it face, um, name it or red or whatever, name it something that people actually searched as relevant. So again, it would be cream leather sofas. Nice and simple example, right? That's your H1. Usually you don't really want to include modifiers and stuff in there because it shows at the top of the page and it's going to look kind of crappy if it's like buy cream leather sofas UK across every single page. It can look kind of crappy. You can kind of include secondary keywords, just don't make it look spammy. So if you want to include a couple extra words or something in there and it's relevant, do that. But again, just be cautious also of not looking spammy. It's kind of a big deal, right? So basically it's just the name of the collection, name of the program, anything. But if you can deliberately kind of include a keyword, that is very, very, very smart. It can absolutely help if you do it in a non-spammy way. And then below that you have the description, which is really, really important for SEO because the content matters a lot. So a lot of stores have this really big problem. I work with a lot of Shopify stores, right? We're constantly ordering and reviewing them. Most of them have not even close to enough content on their pages. So you look at a collection and it has a couple words, if any, it's like a sentence describing the collection. It's not really a decent enough amount of content. Now, one way of doing this, of course, is what a lot of people do is we're gonna stick like 500, 1,000 words. You can put it either behind a read more tag at the top or at the bottom of the page. It's just like a massive article at the bottom. The problem is it looks spammy to say the least. So how do you put content on your collections or your product pages without it becoming spam, right? Well, here's how you do it. Number one is there's a really cool thing you could do by customizing your theme to split the description up. What that means is you're able to put, say, a few sentences at the top and a few sentences in different places around the theme, say at the bottom or anywhere else. What it's gonna allow you to do is really cool things so that you can have a short description at the top below the heading that we just wrote, the title. And then at the bottom, you can have something like an FAQ accordion. If you don't know what that is, it's basically, we'll put like a visual thing here, a little drop down menu where you can click something and it reveals a section and, you, and then you click the next section, you click the next heading, then it, it hides the above one and then shows that one and, and so on. Basically, it's just, you usually see a bunch of headings at the bottom as questions, you click them and it reveals the answer. It looks really cool, it's really visual, it helps people make a buying decision, it actually makes sense for e-commerce, but it allows you also to squeeze in a few hundred extra words or so of content on the page in a very non-spammy way. The other way that I'd recommend adding content, either as an addition to this or replacement to this, is that you can add basically product descriptions or more detailed product descriptions to the products. So for example, if you look at most computer repair stores, but other stores do this also, you can start adding information like how much RAM does this have? What is the processor? What version of Windows or what operating system is running on? And all different things like that for every single product. So suddenly that adds hundreds of extra words to the page across all different products because you're adding additional information about each of the products. Not only is it great for SEO, it also is really, really helpful for users. And also it looks really, really cool. It's not like a thousand words just spams at the bottom of the page. It's actually information that helps them make, again, a buy-in decision. When I'm doing this, I'm not just trying to force as much content onto the page as possible. I'm trying to make it more user-friendly and more helpful to users. That's the first most important thing. And then while we're doing that, we are also looking at the competition and seeing, okay, how many words of content do they have? It's not like, you have to add 400 words to every page. It doesn't matter, okay? Look at a competition, see how much you're doing, trying to stay in that range. But more important than that, make sure you have the best user experience. If you're adding product descriptions and it helps them pick which product they're gonna click onto, you're adding FAQs, which answer questions and stuff. Yeah, you can look a little bit odd if you have significantly more content than your competitors, but honestly, if it's a good user experience, then frankly, it's a good thing, so I'm not really too fussed about it, right? So just really create the best user experience you can possibly create for your users, and that means usually adding more content, it can help dramatically. Moving over to the product pages, again, you have that same description again. One problem you see in a lot of Shopify stores is that they have a few images here, so a big image here, and they have a little grid below it of like images to click through, and then they have this massive description that goes like really, really far down. And there's a tiny little image here and a massive description that you've got to scroll is really thin. 
What can you do to eliminate that? You can have a very short description, then you can split it. So you have the first split, just a short description next to the image like this. And then you have the longer description, full width below that, that expands further. It looks much better rather than have to scroll down and just read it all on one side. It allows you to have it full width. Again, what else can you do here? You can add an FAQ accordion. You can add product details. You can show different, like, hey, this product is compatible with all these different things. You can have images and videos and show um, all the features and what it's made from and whatever else, it depends on what you're selling, right? But you can expand details on the product to better sell this product essentially, right? That is the goal, this is a sales page. So sell the products, utilize that space to do so and do it in a user-friendly way. Don't just, again, we need to add 400 words of content. No, you don't, you just need to have an awesome page. It's gonna sell well and fulfill whatever that user is looking for when they search for this page. Very, very simple, but try generally and just add more content and make the page better. And a quick tip on this, if you sell stuff from a distributor or a manufacturer and they give you product descriptions that you can use, go ahead and use them, but please change them and please add stuff to it. The problem you're gonna have is that if, if 500 different stores, a thousand different stores are selling the exact same product, the exact same images, the exact same description, why is your store any better than the competitors to rank in Google, right? So make sure that you write up a unique description, maybe add more images, maybe add more content, maybe expand it a little bit, add an FAQ, just make your page better than the competitors. And usually that means tweaking the content because again, if it's exactly the same page, why is your page any better? It isn't is the answer. So write a unique description for each one. It's a lot of work. If you wanna start off by just copying and pasting it, that's great, just get the product up. But in the future, I recommend if you wanna rank this, I'd recommend going in there, optimizing it. I do not believe, I, I'm really confident that there's no issues with having duplicate content on products like that, besides the fact that you won't be able to rank that specific page very well if it's duplicate content, that's all. Also, you can do this exact same stuff on your homepage with quite a lot more customization, actually. If you're going to edit your theme, then you can go ahead and optimize your theme. You can create a grid, you can add content. What I recommend is make sure you have a H1 on your homepage, there's a hidden one on your homepage that isn't your logo, ideally, and then a little bit of content also on there. Again, usually you can do like an FAQ there, you can add a little paragraph to explain the things and just make it, again, helpful. What we're looking for is how can we create helpful content that isn't just like spamming an article at the bottom of the page, but actually helps make a buying decision, absolutely helps them build trust, establish trust with your store. And again, also add some content, a little bit of a sneaky way that isn't just literally spamming it all on the page. But that is really what I call the fundamentals of Shopify SEO. Yes, you can do significantly more. Yes, Shopify has a few out of the box issues that I recommend fixing. However, if you get this right, the other stuff isn't that much of a big deal. When you do this right, then you fix the technical issues, then you publish a lot more content, create as many categories as you can for all your products, then push content on a blog level to target middle and top of funnel keywords. You can really have an awesome store that drives a ton of traffic and Shopify is actually, surprisingly, a pretty great platform despite what other people say. For SEO specifically, never mind just being an awesome platform all around anyway. So with that said, let's wrap this up here. I do have other videos on my channel where I review and audit Shopify SEO stores. If you do wanna see them, make sure to go check them out. I also have a massive Shopify SEO guide that covers literally everything on my blog. You can check that out at logix.com. We'll put a link below in the description. If you need any help with this again, head over to that site also. We can do a video review for you, or we can even do a full on SEO campaign and do all this stuff for you. Also, if you like this video, please do me a quick favor. Give the little like button below, just a little tap. It really helps out with the channel and the algorithm. And with that said, we're all done for this video. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you in my next video.